Hey y'all, it's Christy here from Summer Storm Fashions, and I just wanted to have a real honest talk with y'all about um, something that I've been seeing a lot on the social media posts um, from other resellers about people saying that resellers are stealing clothes from poor people. And I just want to have a real honest conversation with you guys about that. And um, if you guys don't want to have a conversation, you just want to tell me I'm wrong or an awful person, then um, save your time and just click the pause button or exit out of this video right now. Okay, so something what resellers do, if you're watching this, you probably already know, is we go out and we buy items such as clothes from thrift stores or clearance items. And then for our business, we sell those products in a variety of ways. Um, I use platforms such as eBay and Poshmark and Amazon um, for a higher profit. And so my biggest flip, that's what you call it when you buy something and then you sell it for something more, was a VHS set that I bought for a dollar and then it sold for almost $200, right? That's a lot. Um, I'm a law student. I'm paying for school myself. I can't have another job. And this is literally how I pay to eat is by doing this. A big part of my business and a lot of resellers business is selling clothes. So we find clothes uh, that have a really high resale value and we buy them for less expensive. So at thrift stores, a really big one that people like to go to is what's called the bins which is where you go to a Goodwill outlet store and you buy pounds of clothes and then you resell them. Now, a lot of people who aren't part of this business say that we're stealing clothes from poor people. Um, first of all, don't um, put, I, okay, so let me start over a little bit. So um, I actually grew up in a really small rural town and if you look at the numbers, I actually grew up in poverty. I didn't grow up feeling poor um, but if you look at the numbers and as I look back now on some of the things that I experienced like you know having free lunch at school or just a bunch of things um, you know I technically grew up poor now something that we do when we refer to people who are currently experiencing poverty or have lower incomes is by calling them poor people that like puts them in a group and then we have all these connotations about them. So first, when we're going this conversation, if we're gonna to refer to people who have a lower income, which I think you're doing, let's refer to them as people first. So people who are currently experiencing poverty. Because that's the other thing too, is just because someone's impoverished right now, doesn't mean they always will be. Like, like me, I grew up poor, and now I'm in law school and I'm working at a very big firm this summer. So that's important. Now let's talk about the clothing part of it. So thrift stores are an awesome way for people, anyone to buy clothes below retail value. My favorite thrift store, I get clothes for 10 cents. Awesome brands for 10 cents, that's great. And so if you're on a budget for whatever reason, being able to buy clothes at a lower rate is awesome. However, we need to be realistic. When you go into a clothing store or a thrift store, there are thousands of items. When resellers come in like myself, I'm not looking for dresses or pants that will look cute. I'm looking for specific brands. So there could be a beautiful dress that I'm not going to buy because it's not a certain brand. So I'm not going in and robbing the store of all high quality items. Furthermore, there are way more clothes donated each year than can possibly use. I'll link the article below. But last year, there was 1 billion pounds of clothes donated to Africa from the US. So these are, if you go to the bins, they have these big blue tubs and all of the clothes that don't sell there, you can hear them bundling them in the background and sending these clothes to Africa. This is so bad. There's lots of research and books out about how helping actually hurts. Because when we send these clothes, one billion pounds, to sub-Saharan Africa, we're, keep, we're making it so that the small business owners there, dressmakers and mom and pop shops, can't grow because we're essentially giving them free clothes. And again, a lot of African countries are against American imports of these. Um, the amount of clothes we donate export is actually our eighth largest export as a country. 
to countries that are asking us not to send any more clothing. But so us going out and buying these clothes is helping to ensure that these clothes aren't being shipped overseas. But that's probably not the impoverished people that you were talking about. You probably meant the working poor in America or your neighbors down the street who are struggling financially and want some clothes. Well, here's the thing. We're not stealing clothes from them. Again, you go into the store and there's a lot there. Moreover, the purpose of these thrift stores is not to provide clothes for people who are living in poverty. In fact, the purpose of these thrift stores is to fund these charities. So one of my favorite thrift stores to go for, for example, the purpose of that thrift store is to raise funds to help sexually abuse women and children. That's awesome. Their purpose is not to provide clothes at a low at a discount rate. Their purpose is to provide resources to people who have had this terrible thing happen. And me going in and buying more clothes than the average Joe is helping these ministries be able to do things. And that's true not only for your local thrift stores, but for Goodwill and Salvation Army who help so many charities and literacy programs. The purpose of these stores, as I said, isn't to provide clothes for low-income people. So again, I just... It just bothers me when people say that because, um, as I said, I'm running this business so I can eat. And when you tell me that I'm stealing clothes from poor people, which I'm not, you're also telling me that me making an income isn't important because you want to know how one of the best resources to lift people, especially women, out of poverty, you help them find meaningful work, not just work where they're working, you know, 60 hour weeks and aren't able to feed their families. But entrepreneurship, I mean, that's the American dream, right? That people can take an idea and grow from what we consider financially nothing to being able to not only support their families, but help other people support their families by taking on employees. And so what's great about e-commerce is literally anyone who has internet access can do it. In fact, I'm helping family members and people back in my hometown who don't have income and are struggling get into reselling because where else can you start a business at such a low investment? I mean, you can list items on eBay for free at the beginning. And so if you can go out and buy 10 cents items and reflip them for $20, man, with a whole, with just $1, you could be feeding your family for a week. And I think a lot of us resellers have stories like that where we use this business to kind of lift ourselves up out of these situations. And so I just really wanted to share that with you all. And um, if you have anything that you want to add to the conversation, please comment below. But when you comment, please be using your thoughts and your mind and your words to add to the conversation about this because this is my job. This is how I provide for myself. This is how I eat. This is also how I support charities that do incredibly important work and how I keep these clothes from 22 million pounds of them going to landfills each year, but also how I, in some way, um, help lower the number of the 1 billion clothes that are going to sub-Saharan Africa and are hurting businesses and people there. So thanks for listening. And again, if you um, have anything you want to add to the conversation, just comment below. Thanks.